Hello everybody, I am back and um, I'm doing this special video as a recap from today's uh, lectures um, to demonstrate to you that RMI does in fact work and so do these examples. Um, so I, I started thinking about it after we left and um, I went home and on my way home I sort of thought I wonder if I had the class path set correctly. And I went in and lo and behold the class path was not set at all on either my Windows or my Mac partition. Um, so I guess I was kind of sloppy, uh, but I hadn't tested ahead of time so I didn't know um, that I did not have my class path set. But that was the reason why those examples weren't working. So what I'd like to do to you, uh, do for you, <laughs> is to demonstrate to you that RMI does work actually. And I'm going to go through the same exact example that I went through earlier in the lecture today. And uh, this time it's going to work now that I have a class path set correctly. Um, so, and in fact, uh, it makes a lot of sense because the error message I was getting was that it couldn't find the object. Uh, the registry could not find the remote object. So, uh, you know, obviously it wasn't didn't know where to look. Um, all right, so what you're looking at here is the RMI registry, starting the registry, which is the first step to running an RMI program. And if you're just tuning in and uh, you did not listen to the previous video, uh, which was number six in the series from today's weekend section, um, you missed it, but uh, you didn't really miss much because the example wasn't working. Um, so what I'm going to do now is show you an example of an RMI program that is running, and I will also put the code underneath the YouTube video uh, so you have access to that as well. I'm going to demonstrate this on a MacBook. The instructions are the same as on a Windows machine, except for obviously you're using a Windows uh, DOS prompt and not a terminal window. So the first step, according to the lecture slide set here, and uh, is to start the RMI registry. So I'm going to type in RMI registry. Registry. There we go. I press return and lo and behold, the RMI registry started. That actually worked for us earlier as well. Um, and uh, so I'm going to minimize this window here and leave the window alone because the window itself uh, needs to run. In fact, the RMI registry is sort of running in the background um, on this computer that I have just. Uh, started it on. So I'm going to go and open up a new shell window. And in the new shell window I need to change the directory to the code directory where I have the files which I loaded on my desktop. Dash code. There we go. And uh, in this directory I'm going to have uh, the interface file and I'm also going to have the um, server file. And I'm going to load them both into this window. So if I follow along my instructions that uh, do work um, despite my previous attempts. Um, I get to this uh, part here. I've already, you know, if you go through the rest of the slide set, you just watch the video. I'm not going to go through the whole video again, uh, but um, lo and behold, the next step is to load the interface and then load the server files. And um, I'm trying to go back to that. Uh, hello. I missed the screen. Here we go. Here's the... No, that's not the screen I want. Uh, that's the client screen. Hold on one second. I was a little too fast with my mouse. I am going back to the screen that has the screenshot of the DOS window. Here it is here. And in here, what we're looking at at the bottom here is lo loading the RMIC utility. Um, so before you can run the server, you need to generate the stub and for the class. And you generate the stub by loading RMIC, which is the utility for the remote object that's going to be used by the server. And the remote object that's going to be used is called Ask the Register Remote in our Java example. And uh, for the code itself, you can refer to the previous video. Um, oh, we don't want that window. Or um, you can, here, this is the window I want. Um, or you can simply just open up these files, the .java files, um, and uh, take a look at the source code for it. So this is the part that I had difficulty with before. Actually, the RMIC, I believe, worked just fine before. Uh, I'm going to type in RMIC, ask the oops, registrar remote, which takes me back to a prompt. It doesn't really do anything. This is the next part where in the previous video, video number six, I believe I had issues with it uh, because it couldn't find, I got an error message and let's hope that we don't get that error message again. Uh, but I have a strange feeling it's gonna work this time because I just typed it in a few minutes ago and it worked just fine. Uh, so when I run this one, I get an exception. Um, and the exception that I'm getting is an unmarshal exception and it's saying unmarshalling argument. Well, that's because the register, believe it or not, is loaded in a different area of my path. 
So I'm actually going to do a, I'm going to do a slight test here. I'm going to go Control C on this and exit out. And I'm going to type the registry. I'm going to load the registry in this window here. I'm going to close this window here where I have the registry already loaded. And um, I'm going to load it because right now if I type in PWD, I'm in this directory here. So I'm going to type in, in the, and right here I'm going to type in um, RMI registry. Load the registry one more time just to make sure everything is loaded from the same directory. Uh, this is the, uh, the thing that uh, is causing the issue right now. And I, I believe that changing my path or adding the class path would have done it, but I believe this is going to fix it here. Um, so now I'm going to type in the uh, change the directory to desktop and change the directory to uh, S code. I guess I could have done that all in one shot. If I check the directory path, now I'm in the same directory as the directory in which I have loaded the RMI registry from. The marshalling should now work. So if I type in RMIC, we, this part worked before just fine. The registrar remote. And uh, now this is the part they gave us problems, uh, Java. Ask the registrar. Oops, I think I misspelled that. Registrar server. This time it worked. And um, so I guess my when I changed the path, I, I, I tested on the Windows side, but I didn't test. Believe it or not, I did not test on my Mac side before starting the video, and I only tested on the Windows side. But um, it's, it's not a bad idea because I was able to duplicate the error that I was having earlier today when I originally tried to show you this during the class. Um, and that was, this was this class not found exception error message. And this is something that you're going to run into. You could possibly run into this if you don't have your class path set correctly. And obviously, I still do not have my class path set correctly <laughs> on my Mac partition. Although my Windows worked just fine, um, perhaps... Uh, I don't know, I didn't reboot, so perhaps that was the issue. Uh, but in any case, I solved the problem by avoiding um, the necessity to have the class path. Now, you need the class path, uh, and this is just a little Java background. If you load stuff from multiple different directories, uh, the Java RMI, the Java JVM, all of the Java components, even the applet browser and things of that nature, uh, need the class path in order to resolve the location for where to find the class objects. And as you can see, when I loaded the RMI registry from the regular old generic directory that I had, actually it was probably from uh, maybe root or something, it was loaded from a different directory. I loaded it this time, I ran the RMI registry from, from and that's why I did the PWD so I could show you, from user bhacker desktop S code. And I'm running this now from user bhacker desktop S code, so I don't actually have to need the class path in this particular situation, which is why this time it actually loaded. Uh, when I was running it earlier today, I didn't think actually of the class path or of changing the directory before running the RMI registry. So long story short, as this lesson has proven uh, to be actually kind of a valuable experimentation, is, the long story short, is that uh, you must be running everything from the same directory unless you have your class path set correctly. If you set your class path correctly, you don't have to use everything from the same directory. So now I have a working RMI registry. I also have a working sub, uh, excuse me, stub, and the RMIC utility has loaded the stub. I actually now have a working and loaded server. So my Java asked the register server. This is the response you want from the bottom. You want it to say, ask the register server is ready. Now all I have to do is open up another shell prompt window and run the client. Um, so I'm going to say new window. And here's my new window. And uh, let me flip back to uh, the PowerPoint slide to make sure that the PowerPoint slide is indeed correct. And here it is here. To run the client, we're going to run in, uh, we're going to run local student, uh, excuse me, Java local student, the um, server, uh, like I probably use local, local host like I did earlier today, and then the CS4380, so uh, 483, excuse me. So if I, well, let's see, if I minimize the screen so I can see the window behind it, minimize the screen here, there we go. This is the, uh, actually I go like this, this is the code I'm going to type in, 
If I type in, oh, let me change the directory before I run into any problems again. Desktop. And I want to go to S code. So uh, here I am. That's good. Go to the screen out here. So now if I type in Java, a local student client, and then I'm going to use localhost because localhost is actually the server that I'm on. Um, I don't want to type in an IP address or anything like that. And then, uh, oops, here I am up here. Get back to where I was. Oops, where, oh, you know what? I left out. Hold on one second. I left out the default. Oh, this is interesting. It actually ran it for me, but let me, uh, let me, uh, let me run that fresh. Actually, I'll just type it in down here. I was trying to resize the window and I accidentally pressed return. Uh, but let me type it in again so you can kind of see the whole output. It, I forgot to put in the this part of it here. I actually just put in uh, this part here and I left off that. But it looks like I had some error checking in here where I only had one parameter, localhost, so no class passed, using this as a default. Um, so let's just type it in again, but this time I'll put in the CS, CS483. And then uh, now I can make this window bigger again so you can see the output that's going to happen. And now it's going to say here, uh, here's the, the line that I just typed in a few minutes ago is right here. And it says a local student client running. That's good. Called with two arguments, the local host and the CS483. Uh, and a remote, okay, so the remote server was local host. The class was CS483. The register status for this is you are registered. So on the server end, what ended up happening is that remote object ended up serving up to me. And here's the response here, because I actually ran it twice. Um, so you can sort of see what happened here. This is the server that's running, the ask the register server, which is ready. And it received a remote invocation from 192.168.1.104. That's my, uh, that's my dynamic, uh, dynamically assigned, uh, well, anyway, it's my IP address from my home here, my home network. And um, I sent it twice. I sent it from two different ones here. If I opened up another shell as an example, and if I change the directory to desktop, actually now the client code would probably run, but I don't have a class path set, so it's not going to run anyway. If I type in again, and uh, let's give it a, uh, let's see. I don't have the client in my memory here. Okay, forget that. Uh, let me just type that in manually in uh, Java. Uh, ask. Uh, let's go find that command here. Actually, kind of lazy. Here it is up here. Ask local. Uh, excuse me. It's not ask anything. It's a good thing I did look it up. Java local student client. Okay, so local host. Let's send it a different number. Let's send it CS nine 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 nine. Oh, that's like a good one. So now you can see um, a different client, but it's the same machine, and I've sent it uh, CS999. And for the registration status for this class, the registration server came back and said there are no positions available to be registered. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, that's because probably because the class doesn't, uh, well, that's the default code. And if I go to the server, and this is the server here, as we can see, this is where we loaded the stub and we loaded the server object, and the server is still sitting here waiting. And now you can see it received the message from the 99999 request, and it's still the same IP address because I'm still on the same computer. So it still knows that it received a remote invocation from this particular IP address, and it and and, and it printed it to the screen. And this was the request. This is the request. This was the request here. So you, you can see that the example does work, and um, it is a valuable troubleshooting um, lesson to uh, basically tell me that I need to make sure I set my class path. I still don't have it set correctly, however. Um, and if if you have issues setting your class path, you forget to set it. Just make sure when you run the code, in this particular example, that you run it from the same directory location. Even though you have different uh, terminal prompt windows or DOS prompt windows opened up, make sure you're in the same directory and uh, the program will work perfectly fine. Um, so, not quite sure um, why I don't have my class pass set correctly, but that's my homework. Uh, your homework is to um, run this example yourself. 
Uh, but before you do that, you're obviously going to have to get the Java EE installed. Um, you're going to have to download the, the, the source code. And I'll put the source code right underneath the video. And uh, you'll be able to, um, hopefully, on a Windows machine or on a, it'll work on both, actually. Um, it'll work just fine. This is the current version 1.7. And uh, it uh, the code, uh, although this RMI instructions, as I was mentioning earlier, I was suspecting that this was old. You know, the, the lecture is about a couple years old. And I thought, ah, maybe they just changed something. But uh, believe it or not, it still works, just like it did two years ago. Different version of Java, and uh, different. Uh, I didn't try the I didn't try the Java RMI daemon, but I'll save that one. You, well, I know it's going to work, so you can run it on your own. Um, actually, I'll, I'll make a new video on that. Um, I'll I'll label them one for the daemon and then one for the regular RMI, um, so we can we can. You know, we won't have to bore everybody with a, a, a long video again. But um, long story short, the example works. The lecture code still works. Uh, so go ahead and have at it and see if you can get it to run on your computer. If you can, then you've got a, you've got a great RMI example uh, to take a look at and to learn from. Uh, when we meet for the next interactive session at the uh, end of February, I'm going to have some more RMI examples for you, but this was just the kind of the introductory example that was uh, listed in the lecture, and it is lecture number four. You can get it from bhacker.com um, if you're interested uh, in downloading the lecture. You don't need it as long as you download the S code um, document, the S code zip file that comes with the lecture that you can use, and I'll put it underneath the YouTube video. So Anyway, so have a good day. Uh, have a good time till the next time I see you, and uh, thanks for attending this uh, very long weekend, interactive weekend session, and I hope to see you again in February. Thank you.